Anyway, um, let's see how you did on these. This is video number two. I don't know how many there's going to be. Like I said, I try to keep them to 10 minutes or so. So we're going to come up with these formulas. I hope you tried them on your own first. You had to at least go to another video to find this one. So try them on. Make sure you're trying these on your own. Have that polyatomic ion list handy. Have a copy of that flowchart handy. Uh, have the PowerPoint open. And, uh, and of course, the periodic table, which you've got on your wall in your home anyway. All right, so each of these are ionic. So again, get the symbols. Sodium is Na, oxide is O. So then we go to group one is plus one. A nonmetal, group 16, negative two, BNA2O. Barium hydroxide, all right, barium is Ba hydroxide, one of your polyatomic ions. Barium is a group two metal, two plus. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, all right, so we know what that is. Again, we need to get to a 2 because the least common multiple of 2 and 1 is 2. Means we need two hydroxides. Remember, we put the polyatomic ion in parentheses. And then ammonium sulfate, okay, two polyatomic ions, a plus 1 and a minus 2. So we're going to need two of the ammoniums and one of the sulfates, so NH4 in parentheses. All right. The homework 9 has a lot of practice on this as well. All right, now let's go to covalent compounds. I'm going to blow through this because you've done this already, all right? But this is a good review. So remember, the first thing in nomenclature is you want to make sure you determine the type of compound because if you try to name a covalent compound like it's ionic and vice versa, you'll get in trouble. So you want to make sure you're naming the right type of compound. All right, so remember, covalent compounds have no charges. Covalent, it's two nonmetals, electron sharing. And remember that we use prefix first, prefix second. The second ends in an I. The prefix is monoditri. We don't use mono if it's the first. All right? So literally the name is carbon and two sulfurs. Carbon disulfide. All right? So sulfur hexafluoride, sulfur and six fluorines, SF6. Two nitrogens, five oxygens, and two O5. That's it. No figuring out charges, no making charges cancel. All right? Try these on your own. Hit pause. All right, you're back from pause. Again, I'm doing these ones quickly. Okay, carbon tetrabromide, CBR, CBR4, sulfur difluoride, sulfur and two fluorines, dichlorine hept, like hepta oxide. So there you go. All right, hopefully you should have, should have notes on that before we took off for the end of the world here. All right. All right, so now go in the other direction. So we have the formula. We want to come up with the name. We can do this a little bit more quickly because it's exactly the same. It's just backwards. All right, a little bit easier. So the first steps are the same. Determining the types of compounds. Again, I have the set. We have acids. We're not going to do acid nomenclature. If anyone is dying of curiosity, you want to pop by my office. <laughs> so pop, talk to me on Zoom. Excuse me. All right. So ionic, how do we know from the formula? Well, from the formula, again, we have the symbols. So we can look them up on the periodic table. How do we know if there's a polyatomic ion? Well, you memorize them, right? So you can recognize them, just like if you recognize a friend's face. Right, so all of these are ionic, right? Has a metal, has a metal, has a metal and a polyatomic ion. This is a polyatomic ion you don't need to know, but anyway, uh, has a metal and a polyatomic ion, has a polyatomic ion. Right. Covalent, again from the from the formula, it's easy because you know there are two nonmetals. Right. So you can see that. All right, so now. Just identifying the compound type, let you try it on your own. Hit pause. Okay, hopefully you tried it on your own, but here's the answers. So molybdenum is a metal. This is where you're just making liberal use of that periodic table and what you've memorized. Calcium is a metal, so this is ionic. And then this compound has two nonmetals, so this is covalent. That means when you're going to come up with the formula from the, I'm sorry, the name from the formula, you're going to look in the covalent area of the flowchart. All right, so now going forward, 
How do we determine the names of ionic compounds? The names are very easy. Okay, the metal, and it's all in this flow chart. Okay, the metals, you just use the element name. So barium ion, in a compound, we don't say, we just drop the word ion. So if it's barium with barium ion and chloride ion, we would just say barium chloride. So it's pretty, they're just use the name of the element, barium, aluminum, zinc. All right, so try these on your own. Use your periodic table. All right, hopefully you're back, you tried it. Okay, so sodium, cadmium, strontium. All right. Okay, now what about the nonmetal ions? We haven't really done this, but nonmetal ions always end in "-ide". So you take the name of the element, cut it off, and put "-ide", as the suffix. It's a little tricky to know where to cut it off. Just do your best. All right, but you don't say oxygen "-ide". You don't add it. You cut it off. So oxide, phosphide, iode, "-ide". Okay, try these on your own. You can use the periodic table. Hit pause. All right, back from pause. Okay, arsenic, arsenide, sulfur, sulfide, fluorine, fluoride. All right, that's it. Now, uh, for to go through this to name the compounds, you simply name the ions. All right. So let's do these two examples, and I'll let you try it yourself. All right. So SR is strontium, I is iodine, so iodide, so strontium iodide. It's that simple. Aluminum and sulfate, aluminum sulfate, aluminum sulfate. Pretty pretty straightforward. All right. Try up. Uh, you know what? This ion is called acetate. I cut these out of a different PowerPoint from a different class. And I thought I caught all the little things that I carried over, but that's called acetate. Let you try it on your own. Hit pause. All right. So coming back from pause. Okay. That's called calcium. That's chlorine. Chlorine becomes chloride. All right. SR is strontium. That's acetate. Again, I gave you six ions to memorize. You do not need to know this one. I just accidentally left it in the slides, and I apologize for that. But you get the idea. right? If it was a phosphate, you'd call it strontium phosphate. By the way, we don't say di. We don't say dichloride. We just say calcium chloride. We never use those prefixes. All right. Whoops. What did I just do? Go to here. All right. Now, for the covalent compounds, all right, covalent compounds, we've done this before, so I'll do this kind of quickly. So the, the formula tells you the name, right? You just use the prefix first, the prefix second with an ide. So we've done these. Again, we don't say mono if it's the first, but we do say it if it's the second. So carbon, mono, monoxide. Sulfur, hexa, chloride di, nitrogen, tri, oxide. But the only time you see these prefixes is for covalent compounds. Do not use these for ionic compounds. All right, so try these on your own. I'll hit pause. All right. So there you go, back from pause, try them on your own, but these are pretty common. Carbon, dioxide, phosphorus, trichloride, dinitrogen, monoxide. All right. Okay, that's pretty much it. So just try these ones on your own. See if you can come up with the names. Remember the first step, is it, is it ionic or is it covalent? Then go through the process. All right, hit pause. All right, back from pause. Try them on your, you hope you tried them on your own. We'll see how you did. Whoops, what just happened? That's them. 
All right, I don't know what I must say. Kick up. So NaI, that's a metal. That's a nonmetal. That means it's an ionic compound. So we name the ions. Na is sodium. Uh, this is something else you don't have to worry about that. And iodine, right? So iodine becomes iodide. Sodium iodide. Okay, N2H4. These are both nonmetals. That means there's two nitrogens and four hydrogens. That's tetra. So remember the second one ends in ide. So it's di-nitrogen tetrahydride. Okay, CaCO3. Ca is calcium. CO3 is a polyatomic ion. Because this is a metal. That means that this is ionic. So we name the ions calcium carbonate. And then this one, what is that? Two metals. What about that? Ah, there you go. There's your chemistry joke for the day. You miss my jokes. I know you do. Anyway, it looks like I did pull this off in two videos. Uh, it's, it's a little complicated. One of the things you definitely want to do is make yourself go step by step. If you don't go step by step, it's really easy to make mistakes here. So make yourself go step by step. All right? So now it's practice, practice, practice.